so design turned out to be a more complex activity than in the past, defining established approaches and solutions. Designers must deal with problems of unprecedented scope from small industrial artifacts to cities, demanding interconnected knowledge and skills. Today, a broader approach is necessary to tackle these new challenges, and therefore, a multidisciplinary collaboration can provide a more inclusive perspective than teams with the same background. Uh, wait a minute. So, what is the motivation of this study? In higher education, the interconnection among disciplines has transcended specific fields. Consequently, the university started to be seen as the environment where to develop ideas going beyond the frontiers established by the traditional organization of the discipline. Thank you. However, there is an absence of multidisciplinary design educational programs, at least truly ones. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and these are not regular programs, but honor ones. Therefore, educational practices supporting the development of multidisciplinary competencies must be encouraged. An interpretative uh, integrative pedagogical approach based on team collaboration can help reconsider how design should be, trust, uh, should be taught across the disciplines. Uh, so first, I, I want to focus on the concept of uh, multidisciplinarity. Uh, multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity are terms used to define the type of cooperation between the disciplines. In our study, we focus on multidisciplinarity. This notion is about dealing with a subject by various disciplines simultaneously. And the aim is to achieve a shared understanding of a phenomena based on the different views. So disciplinary borders are supposed to be extended for the benefit of specific fields. So, here we present a design um, study in higher education. Education is the context uh, of the study. And in this context, we propose that studying design collaboration from a multidisciplinary perspective is a suitable approach to explore the extension of design frontiers, which is the topic of this conference. So, uh, Depending on the team composition, team collaboration can be monodisciplinary. Very good. Don't touch anything. Yeah, it's okay. It's no, it's fade away. Fade away. <laughs> but you hear me. Problem here? No problem. So, uh, as I said, uh, the team collaboration can be monodisciplinary or multidisciplinary. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. For example, the variety of multidisciplinary teams enable a diversity of thinking, learning new methods, and innovative solutions. In monodisciplinary teams, in contrast, specialization in a domain limits the view on the big picture. For example, maybe the value uh, of certain issues in other disciplines are disregarded. However, specialization enables to develop expertise and improve performance of the outcomes. In contrast, the diversity of multidisciplinary teamwork can affect collaboration, creating conflicts. Causes can be many, yes? Just to mention a few, for example, priorities or difference in knowledge or team roles. Uh, so there is a research in design about multidisciplinarity, but comparative studies on mono versus multidisciplinary uh, uh, design teams are underdeveloped. Uh, Successful uh, collaborations are crucial for tackling complex projects. However, this very much depends on the quality of the team collaborations. The concept of team quality was introduced by Hoegel and Gemunden 
and it plays a critical role to explore multidisciplinary design and its influential factors. Uh, this is a comprehensive notion that I will not uh, go through it due to the uh, time uh, constraints, but uh, just to uh, resume it in a, in a, in a few words, it's, it's a notion about the, the excellence of the team collaboration. And it mainly focuses on two uh, aspects. One of them is social interaction factors, like for example, cohesion and mutual support. And the other one is about task related factors, like for example, communication and coordination. So uh, there is research about these two dimensions uh, in general. And they were, uh, be, they were found to be strongly related on, for example, personal expectations or team management or, or educational outcomes like, for example, collaborative learning. However, there are no studies on multidisciplinary design uh, that investigated teamwork quality based on social related and task related factors simultaneously. Uh, so there is also a lack of uh, multidisciplinary uh, studies uh, on design and educational programs. So what are the main research questions to deal with these research gaps that I mentioned before? The first one is what are the comparative social related and task related dimensions of multidisciplinary and monodisciplinary design teamwork? Then how does multidisciplinary compare to monodisciplinary team composition affect the quality of design team work concerning social related and task related dimensions. And finally, how can team work quality inform the debate uh, about extending the frontiers of design in higher education? Please Gaetano, the stage is yours. Uh, <coughs> thank you Hernan, uh, good afternoon also from my side. So, uh, a few words about the research approach we adopted. Uh, I can. Um, you can go. Wait, okay. uh, it is a kind of a retrospective study based on uh, interviews. Uh, the interviews uh, were structured or semi-structured to be precise uh, with a number of questions that have been defined uh, based on the state of the art analysis. So it is uh, based on a previous uh, uh, surveys uh, adapted to our purposes. Uh, we decided to go with uh, interviewing uh, students of two educational programs also because we wanted to have uh, people uh, who participated in uh, collaborative design activities with a very similar situation but the uh, background of the team members. Uh, and this was uh, so uh, very convenient. I will give you a few more details about these two groups. Uh, each interview, thank you, oh. <laughs> uh, was lasting for about 60 minutes. Of course, it was uh, done under COVID period, so uh, unfortunately online over all 13 interviews. Uh, we recorded, transcribed, analyzed independently. Uh, again, I will tell you a bit more about how the analysis was done and uh, eventually we uh, recognized some uh, key topics uh, that we considered uh, uh, worth of uh, discussion. Next, please. So, um, just uh, a few words about the uh, subjects. Uh, they were uh, invited from two different study programs. Alta Scuola Politecnica is uh, an initiative uh, that uh, has been uh, uh, developed already since 15 years ago by Politecnico di Milano and Politecnico di Milano together and the classroom uh, is attended by students of any engineering, architecture and uh, design uh, program. Um, the mm, control group was uh, composed by mechanical engineering students. In both cases we are talking about master degree students at, at the very end of their curriculum uh, so, let me say, a kind of uh, uh, junior practitioners. Um, and in both cases, the course have very similar content and they have a project work which lasts for several months in the semester. So all these things were in common, but the background of the participants. And uh, a few words also about the project works. Uh, the project were all offered by companies. 
uh, they were uh, supervised also by some um, subject experts, not by the, the just by the assistants uh, of the two courses. And uh, it, uh, the task involves uh, both, uh, let me say, a proper interpretation of the challenge, then an exploration of the design space and the proposal of solution until to, let's say, an early embodiment. And so very, very similar, and this is the kind of process. So how we, did we perform the analysis? We, uh, Hernan and I, uh, uh, analyzed the transcripts independently. We wrote down uh, the topics that we consider were the top priority for the interviewees, uh, eight uh, out of 140 for Alta Scuola students and five out of 50 for the Mechanical Engineering Control Group. And we uh, classified these topics according to two uh, main dimensions, mono against multidisciplinary and uh, social against task related uh, topics. And of course then we, uh, we compare with each other and by consensus we recognize what was, uh, uh, let me say, aligned in our interpretation. Uh, I will focus uh, about the topics, uh, the, sorry, the task related uh, topics. Uh, what we did was to uh, cluster those topics according to some main themes here represented in capital bold. Uh, of course, uh, you find different uh, topics, uh, mono, uh, multidisciplinary, uh, classified according to the priorities of the group. So, um, in, uh, in purple and red, you find the excerpts uh, taken from the interviews. I just want to highlight a few points of some of the uh, last related topics. About the goals. Uh, I mean, I would like to stress that we all know the importance of multidisciplinarity in teams, but there are also some things that we should pay attention to. For instance, uh, in multidisciplinary teams, if, first of all, uh, the, the multidisciplinary backgrounds affects not just the solution, but also the goals that they assign to the self, the way they interpret the task. Not only, even when they uh, share the goals uh, to be uh, pursued, at the very end, the solutions do not necessarily reflect the shared goals. So this is something that a multidisciplinary team should pay attention to. This does not happen in monodisciplinary teams. A second aspect that uh, I think it is uh, also worth considering when we are dealing with multidisciplinary team is that uh, there is a kind of rebound effect, meaning that uh, the discussion is so that uh, simpler ideas tend to prevail on more specialistic ones. Uh, in other terms, it happens that uh, the, the team members who were trying to bring uh, their more specialist knowledge got their ideas rejected because they were more difficult to communicate, while proposing some, something simpler was more easily accepted. On the contrary, the multidisciplinary uh, team members uh, had no such a kind of problem, uh, even if they were aware that their ideas suffered of breath. So they could go more easily in depth, but uh, they were aware that they would have uh, uh, benefited by a larger uh, competence. Thank you very much. Now I will continue with the social related dimensions and as you see the figure shows the main themes and related topics for the social uh, dimensions that were common to the mono multidisciplinary teams and these were mutual trust, leadership, team interaction and project and design management. However, as you can see, the topics corresponding to each of the themes differ according to the disciplinary, disciplinary team. Uh, and uh, just to mention a few, uh, for example, mutual trust in multidisciplinary teams, when the knowledge to deal with the task was too specific to be understood f by everybody. So students had to trust the expertise from certain disciplines, and this implied renouncing to control many details of the design process. But trusting others contributed to create a good atmosphere an enhanced team cohesion. In the monodisciplinary teams, trusting others was also positive, but for other reasons. For example, the common knowledge and skills of the engineers enable understanding design situations easier and faster. Uh, just to 
give another example about leadership, uh, we see that in the multidisciplinary teams, those with an engineering background and high self-confidence emerge as natural leaders and they had knowledge needed to coordinate uh, the actions among the disciplines and to encourage uh, discussions. But their dominant role interfere with the contribution of other less represented um, disciplines. In contrast, in monodisciplinary teams, there was no natural leader. Maybe it's not surprising because of their similar background. But there was an in uh, effective interaction between them and there was a well-distributed responsibility to deal with the project. Uh, so, because we are just arriving at the end, uh, I would like to present the uh, implications for extending the, pr the frontiers of design. Uh, we can say that transcending the frontiers of monodisciplinary teams is challenging and demands understanding the other disciplines. Main points that emerged from our study based on the interviews were to identify common goals but also care for balance of interest and this is critical for developing consistent solutions. Build mutual trust among the parties, uh, particularly when the task is too complex to be uh, uh, grasped by all the disciplines. And coordinate design actions efficiently uh, for developing novel but also robust solutions. For example, distribute uh, tasks in uh, teams of specialists. Clearly communicate disciplinary knowledge is another issue that uh, emerged. Uh, and mainly those that are alien to others. Maybe this will require adapting yes, knowledge uh, and methods to be understood by other disciplines. Uh, but also spend time reflecting on ideas uh, and um, being simple but not simplistic. We believe that this will contribute to um, construct a common share mental model of the team. Just to finish, a few limitations like, uh, um, for example, uh, we selected mechanical engineering and we know that uh, due to their horizontal competencies, maybe this has soften differences with the multidisciplinary teams or the nature of the sample uh, because uh, multidisciplinary teams included honor students which uh, probably have better capabilities than their regular students from the mechanical engineering and also the issue of the COVID the outbreak uh, that affected the way that we collected data using uh, online interviews probably this affected the richness of the data and uh, now the last uh, the last uh, slide uh, about the conclusions uh, teamwork quality was a suitable framework to study design team dynamics it shed light about the more comprehensive view of multidisciplinary teams and their narrow but deeper approach of the monodisciplinary one Besides promoting the development of design knowledge and skills, focusing on teamwork quality is critical to enhance multidisciplinary team collaboration. Universities must support environments aimed at training design students to work with partners from different fields. Transforming the way design is taught nowadays is challenging and will require overcoming current disciplinary biases and preconceptions. Thank you very much.